Hey there, YouTube. Thanks for tuning back into the channel. We'll uh, talk more about the little Civic build today and uh, kind of what we've been working on along the way. But let's go ahead and roll the intro and we'll get started. Hey guys, welcome to the channel. So today we're gonna go over kind of what I've been working on with the little Civic. Um, I started out with this project almost two weeks ago exactly on the YouTube channel. So uh, first couple episodes were a little rocky, um, real short content. I don't feel like you guys got to see like a, an idea of what was going on other than just the car in general. So today we're gonna talk about <clears throat> the starter replacement, what I ended up doing and how I ended up getting a new starter. We'll go through a lot of the things that I had to replace along the way to replace the starter. Uh, we'll go over some of the stuff in the front end that we replaced, so headlights, radiator support, um, things of those nature. They're still in process, but I've got them mocked up now. We're just ready to weld them in. And then once we get that started, we'll uh, dig into the wheels. Um, if you remember, they were red. And uh, I'll go through a little bit of the process on what we've encountered along the way. We'll uh, go over the interior of the car, the uh, new suspension, uh, which is partly finished, and uh, talk about some of the upcoming parts, what's on the way, and uh, maybe some of the plans with uh, what we've got really in mind for the car. So the car really started out as one thing, and it's kind of turned into another. So further on in the video, we'll. Uh, probably look to some comments from you guys as to really what you think the car should really shape into. Um, should it be something that I keep as a track car? Um, you know, it's relatively inexpensive, but uh, we'll get into that a little bit later. So let's go ahead and dive in. All right there, YouTube. So uh, the first things first, let's talk about the starter. Um, I haven't really covered this yet, but Part of what I'm using here is a GoPro Hero. Um, I've got it mounted to like a janky little Amazon tripod. If, uh, if I can find a picture of it here without too much effort, I'll put a picture somewhere in the top of the video. But the uh, tripod sometimes falls apart and a lot of what we're gonna try to look at, you probably can't see without a handy dandy flashlight. So. With that being said, I'm gonna to try to put the light on the subject and then we'll be able to really see what we're talking about. So without any further ado, let's get into the starter. So the starter, as you can see down in here, is brand new. So I ended up having to go to AutoZone. Um, other options just weren't reliable. The idea was that I was gonna find one on Facebook or like Craigslist and then at that point, it just really wasn't wasn't a guaranteed thing. So, with that being the case, I ended up buying one on Facebook. I got it home, still have it, and the collar of the starter. I'll show you here. Um, it just doesn't fit the transmission, so it won't engage the flywheel. So that's something to pay close attention to. I should have removed the one I had um, prior to grabbing the other one, or bringing it with me and paid closer attention because I already had it off but it's uh you know a little lesson learned I've got another one if anybody needs one I believe if it's either a um different year model transmission flywheel combo um or it's probably an automatic if uh if you know the answer and we're talking about the collar here if you know the answer to what this fits let me know that way I can put it back on Facebook and get my money back. But it just doesn't work in my application. So uh, while we were doing all the battery and you know starter issues here with the cabling and whatnot, the battery charger I bought didn't help my battery. My battery had a dead cell. So I ended up having to pick up another battery along the way. So now we're just perfect. Um, I also fixed and soldered a new... Um, cable, um, battery cable, and probably can't see it way down in there, but I had to resolder the end on the uh, starter, starter wire. I'm not too awfully happy with this 
particular soldering gun, it just it didn't seem to get hot enough to even join what I was trying to do. Maybe it's user error. I've always used the one that's kind of like a pencil type, um, but I found one of those again, so I won't be using that one anymore. So the uh, entire agenda today I actually wrote down so I could try to piece it all together and not ramble for you guys. But in addition to the, uh, the wires and whatnot on there, I heat shrink the ends of them so it looks real clean. I know it's probably like the worst video quality ever for me here with this little baby flashlight. But in addition to the starter, um, I started taking out a lot of the uh, spot welds on the core support. So I've got some pictures here. I may cut the video and add them in, but What I did was I took a small drill bit and from that point I stepped up until I could use a unibit and I continued to go ahead and make all of the spot weld holes and or drill all the spot weld holes. And by doing that, I was able to take like a flat chisel or a pry bar and just basically finish off what was remaining in excess for the, the spot welds. And by doing that, the radiator sport just more or less came right off. So there's other YouTube videos out there if you want to know like in depth of how I did it. But now with everything being back on the car, I have the fenders, the headlights, the bumper, the grill, everything lined up. So that way I could adjust all the gaps and position everything. So that way in return, I knew exactly where the radiator sport should be. So now the next step in the process is we're going to remove the headlights we're going to remove the fenders but before we do so right now the fenders are the only thing holding the radiator support in place so once i remove the headlight the bumper cover i'm going to tack weld the actual radiator support in place so that way it doesn't jump around and then we'll come down here below the actual frame rail and I'll probably end up having to clamp some of these flat again but once I've got it closer I can weld it there's a guy locally that I met through uh, sourcing some other parts that I'm probably gonna have do the inside I'm just gonna tack it all in place where I need it bolt it back into the actual ends of the frame rail and then have him weld it because for what he'll charge I really can't go wrong so Pretty good, uh, pretty good progress on the front end there. It is actually all super clean. I've got some pictures I'll, uh, I'll post in here so that way you can see the lines meet well. Um, there's not a hood latch in the car and the hood stops are not in the car too. So it's a little lower than what it would be if those were there. So you kind of have to ignore that part whenever I post the pictures. But let's uh, go ahead and talk about what else we got going on here. So, all right guys, so this is actually the main reason I was wearing the sunglasses the entire time. So I've been working on these wheels outside on the back deck. Um, I started to record a time lapse. Um, I actually may show you part of the time lapse just because it's uh, kind of a good representation of what it looked like after the aerosol or uh, aerosol um, aircraft remover. But with uh, aircraft remover on what I thought was paint there was a zero success rate so what it turned out to be is plastic dip and I'm not sure if it's too thin of plastic dip or plastic dip that maybe had been painted red but from what I can tell it is just on the surface and it's not really wanting to come off so I'm going to cut here to this particular wheel and I've already done this one for the most part, but you can see it was gunmetal before, blue before that, somebody sanded the surface. On top of that, the wheel was inside and out, plastic dip, and aircraft remover just wouldn't take it off. So this one still has the majority left on it. This is the final result of what the aircraft remover did do. And as you can see, like this stuff is just, 
it's resilient and it comes off in small tiny pieces so my process to get this off after I realized it was plastic dip was to take a cleaning solution um, we have a cleaning service that uh, we're starting up but the solution is primarily alcohol so the highest percent of alcohol that you can possibly get and you more or less pour it on the outside of the wheel and you let it dissolve the actual plastic dip. Now you can buy dip dissolver, you can buy dissolve it. Um, there's like probably a hundred different solutions to take adhesive off. Uh, Goo Gone's one of them. I've used Goo Gone in the past and you spend a lot more time rubbing than you do actually letting the product work. So I wanted a, a pain-free option to be able to more or less have it removed without having to spend an hour per wheel. Well, even my resolution was close to like an hour per wheel. And after I soaked it with alcohol and I could really like remove the edge. So what I'm talking about is this, once I could get this pulled back, I then took the pressure washer and the nozzle that I have is like a 30 degree. So it comes in here and it would just barely meet the edge of where the plastic dip is and by doing this, it would kind of force it to pull back. Well, the problem is plastic dip is like a plastic type material. So it is very stretchy. And in return, it basically did the same as like a water balloon. And when the nozzle went in, it made a balloon full of water and it eventually comes back in the opposite direction. And I ended up more or less taking a bath trying to do a couple wheels so it wasn't a process that I had really thought was perfect but it seemed to kind of fall somewhere in the middle of it works it's not quick but it kind of gets the job done so as you can see I'm still not completely through um, these are actually going to a, a new home and we're picking up some different wheels some Honda Civic SI wheels tomorrow and I'll probably try to record most of that process, but these particular ones, I mean, there's nothing wrong with them. They're not near, I mean, tires are very good. Uh, this is actually the worst tire, but even it's still in better shape than what most of the stuff is that I've seen for the price. But a buddy of mine showed interest and he's gonna come down and pick them up this weekend. And I had the opportunity to pick up a set of SI wheels. So they're uh, 15 inch, um, pretty decent tires for what I'm told. There's a little nick in one of them that I'm hoping is not an issue. It said it balances out right, kind of taking his word for it, um, but they're super cheap. So we'll uh, talk about that a little bit more tomorrow and then uh, see what we can do from there. So let's uh, go ahead and keep moving. All right, guys, let's talk about interior. So this particular interior was very dirty. <laughs> so I don't know if, we're just not even gonna go into it, but what I did was I wiped down the entire interior. Entire interior. I used like a multi-surface cleaner. Um, it's a little bit of Dawn uh, peroxide and alcohol, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it's the green alcohol, so it smells minty. It's kind of cool, but it foams slightly. Uh, so again, this is one of the, the products that they use, but um, it's, pretty inexpensive and it works well so I clean the entire inside down and by doing that I found a lot of like weak components um, some missing components so like dash pocket uh, door panels being broke underneath the fabric but in return I sourced out quite a few so we're just kind of going to go step by step and talk about them so the, uh, the car here needed a door panel. I was actually able to pick up the door panels for both sides in good shape along with the seats. Um, I ended up getting them for a good deal. I got them for 80 bucks. Um, locally, the seats that I was finding that were made for a Civic and not a four-door Civic, a uh, hatchback or a coupe, um, they're all split. I mean, they weren't any better than what I had. You know, these cars now, 1998 model is 20 years old. So, it's kind of common for a lot of material to break down in that amount of time, especially considering most of these cars have 200, 300,000 miles 
that's a lot of time in the seat. Um, it's kind of disgusting if you think about it, but these in particular, um, they came out of a car that he was parting out and they're in good shape. They've got a couple burns and different odd little dimples, but they're in very good shape compared to what the rest of the seats I saw. I actually bought the set of EM1 seats, EM2 seats, I'm sorry, and they uh, don't fit without some modification. I was willing to take the modification into consideration and then at that point go ahead and kind of make them fit, but they were too tall. Sarah's going to get me some hamburger buns, so she's not ready to be on camera yet. But, um, so where were we with the seats? Um, but yeah, so those were too tall. Um, by them being too tall, I had luckily found this other set. And even the EM2 seats, um, I mean, I'm trying to resell those. I might even just take them back to pull apart, but enough rambling. So, um, with that particular purchase, we got seats, we got door panels, and there's still a few other things I needed. So um, I'd gone to pull apart the weekend before, and I was able to get a 98 Civic cluster that was out of a EX car that had the tachometer. So no longer has an automatic gauge cluster, and it now has the added tachometer. As you see here, the steering wheel came in, uh, eBay special. I believe the steering wheel is $34.99. The hub is garbage. Um, it works, but, well, let me rephrase that. The hub is not garbage. The adapter, the quick release adapter is garbage. The screws aren't exactly tight now, but whenever I did have them all tightened down, it just had a lot of slack in it. Not only that, but it's extremely hard to get free. Um, hopefully it'll loosen up a little bit. So let's keep talking. Um, I was able to get a interior fuse layout. Uh, those are extremely hard to find. I've had zero luck in the past in the junkyard, but I found one laying in the back seat of a car at the pull apart. So when when I picked up the steering column. Um, if you remember in one of the previous videos, the ignition was actually the reason that the starter malfunctioned. So I uh, stitched all that, put it all back together. It is all functioning as it should with the key. But we still got to put the door panels in. I saved them for last. See here that they're in the back. And I did that because they're very brittle. Um, I'm kind of concerned that I may end up breaking the good one that I got. Um, if you've got a tip or you guys have ran into this, um, if I end up keeping the car, that until might end up happening. Um, I mean, these are already kind of brittle as they are, but I'm going to have to re-inspect them again. The, uh, the one I'm talking about is not the driver's side, it's the uh, passenger side. I may end up just leaving the one on there now to risk further damage, and uh, then if it gets bad in the future, I'll have a backup. But So on to the interior. The... Uh, other parts of the interior. I started removing the back and it didn't dawn on me that the previous owner had, had a laminated floor that was kind of laid across the spare tire well. Um, a lot of these cars, uh, a lot of cars in general have a little cardboard tray and that sits in the, the back part of the, the car and if they get wet or you sit something on it that it's too heavy and the spare tire's gone, they buckle, they break, anyhow, they just, they end up wearing out. And this one obviously had the same problem. So he took laminated flooring and kind of made him a little uh, false floor. Well, underneath that false floor, I don't think it's been vacuumed since this car was probably purchased in 1998. So I have a little bit of a, a chore. I've already removed all of the, the trash and things and whatnot that I could, but by doing so, um, I've still got to wipe down the rear part here, and then from that point, put everything back together. Um, it's going to be a full interior car, even if I end up making it into like a track car. Um, the title and everything should be back in about four to six weeks. Um, I was able to knock that out 
um, since we spoke last. And the uh, the sh main reason that most of this is apart back here is because of the actual suspension. So I've thrown out some of it already, but the uh, the way that it's set up um, now, or the way it was set up before, the suspension itself, the cool springs have been cut, and for anyone that has ever cut a coal spring if you cut a coal spring you then create a void between the top of the strut and the coal spring because you've shortened the height of the coal spring and by doing that it typically ends badly for the strut in this case it ended badly all the struts are killed um, at first I thought maybe just buy another set of springs put them on but when the struts were bad, I started looking at options, and the best option was to buy like a ready-made strut or like a quick strut because I needed the spring too. And those were anywhere from like 60 to like 80 bucks. And by the time you buy four, you know, 60 turns into 240, 80 turns into 320 pretty quick. And that wasn't something that I was really looking to spend on a stock application or a stock you know, product. So I turned to eBay. And I was able to find a, a strut, um, it's actually a coilover that Hunter Tuned had uh, reviewed. And it's a little soft for like a race application as he's proven in several videos. Um, if you haven't seen any of his videos, look him up, Hunter Tuned. Um, he's got a pretty cool video just recently from the, the weekend with his suspension being too soft and the car ending up into the tire, like cutting into the tire because it was uh, weight transfer. But for my application, this is primarily going to be something that is a daily driver. I wanted something that was going to be a normal, you know, quality, ride quality, um, not too stiff, not bouncy. And he seemed to kind of relay that that was possible with this particular coilover in his video. So if you haven't seen it, go watch it. But what I started out with was just to buy the coilovers. And then, you know, years ago whenever I would do this, I would always run into the issue where you'd strip on a bolt, a bolt um, or you would basically break out a bushing. And then you have to run to the junkyard mid-install and pick up a new lower control arm. Well, to prevent that, I went ahead and I ordered the lower control arms in aluminum. And I think they're, yeah, they're aluminum. And they're only like 40 bucks, I think, $43 shipped. So this is what they look like. Um, this is actually the coilover bolted to it. My only complaint with this as a combo is the bushing and the sleeve inside the part where the strut actually connects is too small. Um, as you can see, there's like a considerable difference between the top and then the one right below it. So top, the one right below it. For some reason, the one right below it is a lot narrower and that created a, vo a void. So rather than bolt that down and have to tighten it and end up bowing my, uh, my strut, possibly stressing the weld here, what I decided to do was to more or less create a spacer and I did that with washers. So it shouldn't have any kind of structural integrity issues. Um, it should run drive, you know, just as everything was before. But I wanted to make sure that that void was taken up and I've got one of these on, but with new bushings and the car being on jack stands, it's been a little chaotic to say the least because the way that these bushings are, they're slightly oversized. So you end up having to peck them into place, persuade them into place. And by doing so, the car's not off the ground a lot. So by trying this I've got one in I'm gonna work on the rest of them this evening and then we're gonna to start to the front um, when I started out with this project you know you have to jack the car up and then put it on jack stands and you have to take the wheels off so I turned to my trusty oldie but a goodie half inch impact and I purchased this I believe in 2009 so this little guy's what nine years old give or take a couple months maybe but <clears throat> harbor freight special 2.0 battery i don't know much about it. it was an earthquake brand but 
it worked great until about the last few years and it gave up the ghost so what I've been using is a lot of the Porter cable um, I've got a lot of their 20 volt pieces uh, reciprocating saw I have a drill impact but they just weren't enough to take off the actual uh, lug nuts so I needed another half inch option and by looking for a half inch option I seen plenty of reviews and you know there's a bunch of guys here on YouTube that I follow and you know for the majority of it you see them run to the junkyard grab this grab that they're working in the shop everybody's running cordless tools and I believe Boosted Boys uh, Kyle um, I think last I saw he was running like one of the uh, Milwaukee um, the fuel half inch and I looked at a bunch of stuff and I'm pretty loyal to Amazon so I turned to the DeWalt and this little guy seems to be exactly what I need um, it's got some LEDs built into it it uh, also has an incredible battery life if I'm not mistaken it's uh, it's like 450 foot pounds of torque um, so this should be everything that I need um, but this was an Amazon Prime and for those of you that don't shop online a lot or maybe still shop local a lot um, this particular item was 349 <coughs> excuse me don't quote me on that um, but it's 349 I believe at Lowe's I'll find it and I'll put a picture in here to confirm that price um, but I ended up ordering it on Amazon and I found it on Friday whenever I started to do this project and I was planning on just running to the Lowe's Home Depot or wherever it was local and buying something. But after I looked, Amazon has, you know, their Amazon rewards. And by purchasing this through Amazon under Amazon Prime, it saved 5%. So not only did I get it Sunday, which was very odd, but at the same time, it was barely over 300 bucks. Um, with the, the Amazon rewards part. So, um, killer way to buy it. And in return, what would have cost $59, $69 at the local store, I ended up getting a, I believe this is an 11 piece. Um, anyhow, it's 11 through 32, it skips a few sizes, but they're half inch, shallow, six point uh, impact sockets. Um, so for you uh, non Honda people, 32 millimeter is going to be the axle nut. And then the only one I don't have that's kind of routine and common is the 10 mil. But anything that I should be running a 10 mil on, heaven forbid, I can't run it on a, a quarter inch impact. But I've got you know all of the, the necessities. And this thing was under $30. So uh, killer Amazon find there. But... Before we get off on uh, too many tangents, let's uh, go back to our list and uh, talk about what's next. So the uh, the next thing on our list is going to end up being the items kind of on the way. So um, right now in process, I've got the suspension that I've got to finish up. I've also got the uh, front end that I've got to tack weld. And then the car will be back under its own power to be able to roll around and kind of get out of my way from the garage. But once we kind of conclude those projects, um, I've got a few others on the way. So I've watched a lot of YouTube videos and not only has it been me trying to figure out how to run the channel and how to make content, but at the same time, it's other interests of mine. So a um, long time ago, I ended up working at a, a tent shop, detail shop, and I've always found it fascinating for people to tent windows, but I've never been great at the cutting part. So I've watched a YouTube video and these guys have confirmed that anyone can apply pre-cut tint. So I've got a pre-cut window tint kit coming for the little car and it's just going to be legal, but it'll kind of get rid of that fishbowl look. And then I'll film that and kind of go through the process of how I did it. And uh, you can kind of see my trials and tribulations along the way. but. It's, uh, it's a pretty cool idea, so it's $27, um, give or take a couple bucks, probably depending upon the car. But this particular car is just going to have four windows and a back glass, so five total. And the back's going to be 20%, and the driver's side and passenger side will end up being 
um, legal, 35. So state of North Carolina depicts 35. Uh, with this car having a hatch, it falls in the classification, the same as an SUV. So you can tint the uh, back past the driver's side and passenger side front door as dark as you want, um, just as long as the driver's side and passenger side front doors are at least 35. So that's uh, it's a new up and coming video you can look out for. Um, as well as I've got a axle on the way. So I had meant to show you this guys earlier, but the uh, little flashlight here ran away. The uh, axle on this side has the camera up, a really busted boot on the inside, and I believe more. There's a crack, there's got to be a crack in this one as well, as much grease as there is. But I'm going to go ahead and replace it. Um, back whenever I used to do this a lot, you know, axles were 60, 70, 85 bucks, and a lot of the people I knew ended up trying to use the the warranty claim process and you know that's not only like illegitimate but it's kind of deceitful in doing so so I looked around for options this time around and it was a lot more expensive to order um, from like AutoZone or Advance and little secret for not more than 40 bucks uh, you can get an OE axle right on Amazon and it comes in two days so I'm a big Amazon advocate if you can't tell but by uh, getting that axle we'll go ahead and get that on there um, just keep everything clean I don't even think it makes a noise from what I've driven the car already but uh, it will as that axle joint dries out but a um, couple projects a couple videos yet to come and uh, We'll, uh, we'll clean out the rear of the car and probably start looking at some options. Um, I found a local turbo kit for very cheap. I'm not going to name the price, um, but it's complete except for axles, or not axles, uh, injectors. And it needs an oil feed line and then it would need a, a tune. I've got a chip P28 that I brought back from uh, my parents over the weekend that's been in storage for who knows how long. And <clears throat> the uh, the top cover's been missing. So I'm gonna try to work out something with Hunter Tune to get him to test it and uh, maybe repair it if that's possible and use it. Otherwise we'll have to uh, find a new P28 um, to jump this one back down so we can uh, tune it. But I think I'm getting way ahead of myself there. We'll uh, work on it as is for the time being and then uh, my little baby brainstorm projects of uh turbo applications will have to wait but all right guys i'm gonna just clip this and uh, add it in i got to rambling in the last one so um let me know what you think of the progress uh leave me a comment below i'm really responsive um i like to have feedback but if you like this video make sure you hit the like button uh, if you haven't already subscribe for uh future content there's a, a notification bell if you hit it it'll let you know each time i upload a new video as always, guys, I appreciate the support, and uh, catch me in the next video. Appreciate it.